What's up guys, I'm going to be talking about the tech stack that I'm using for this application that you're seeing right here and why each component is needed and what it's bringing to the table. So here I have the readme up and as you can see this is what the stack is. So in the back end I am using PostgreSQL, Express, and I'm using GraphQL and then in the front end I'm using React. So let's start off with React. Why am I using that? Um, why is it necessary or um, can I switch it out for something else? Because what you can do is you can eliminate this guy altogether and just have these guys. Um, React is just adding JavaScript, and you don't need JavaScript. You can just create static HTML pages without it. But the nice thing about React and JavaScript is you just add a lot of interactivity to your application, and it's really nice. So, for example, I have this little input form here, and I can type a new suggestion. And then when I hit enter, it's going to pop up right here. So we're changing the HTML of the page. Now, if I was not using JavaScript, what you have, what you would have to do, is when I enter, you know, a suggestion here, and hit enter, you'd have to reload the page, and then you'd see the suggestion here. But notice how there's no reload; it just automatically pops here. So that's really cool and the nice thing about JavaScript. So that's one. That's one reason you use JavaScript is. For these sort of things interactivity inside the page the HTML is changing as the user is clicking on stuff pushing buttons sliding things doing different stuff um, so that's what JavaScript and reacts adding if you don't need any of that if you just have you know static stuff or if you don't mind if the page loads and it's simple then you don't need react you can do it without it and you can just serve static HTML pages without JavaScript um, and then you can do JavaScript without React. React's just nice if you want to need to write a lot of JavaScript. So that's that's why I'm using React for that nice stuff. Um, and also, this will be why you need a server too. But I'm also using WebSockets um, and subscriptions, which you need JavaScript for. So here I am. If someone clicks on this button from a different browser. So someone else's account, I will see the vote. Here are the votes right here. Uh, nothing's happening now because I've already voted on this item. But as you can see, I can vote on this one. Now if someone else votes on someone else's computer, I'll actually see it here without refreshing the page. So that's really cool. So that's one of the things that um, you could do with JavaScript as well. OK, so why am I using? Now for the back end, I'm going to start with the database, why that's necessary. So the big thing with database is to persist data. So you guys see I have all this stuff here, right? If I refresh the page, um, it stays there. Uh, you know, it gets reordered. I need to fix that. But you can see a new suggestion that we just created. Here, newly created, right? So I created it, and then I refresh the page. I come back at a later date. It's still there, right? So that's because we're storing it in a database. And it's going to be there. So anything you want to store for a user, persist, and use other times they come visit the website, you want to put that inside of a database, um, and then grab that. And why are we using a server? The reason for that is kind of an in between between the database and uh, React. So if we didn't need to store anything in a database, we wouldn't even really need. You know, if we don't want to persist anything, if everything is what the user is interacting with and in that session then you don't need a database at all and then if react needs to connect to a database it can connect directly if it wanted to but the one thing that's really bad about that is if I inspect this right here if I go to sources I can see all the code for this um, I think it's here yeah so I can see all the JavaScript code that's running in my browser like this is really ugly and stuff um, but this is the JavaScript code that is running this. So what I can do is I can actually put my credentials for the database um, in React, and I could connect directly. I don't need a server. I could connect directly to the database, and uh, there you are. You get your data, and it's persisted, right? Well, you saw how I was able to just access the source code for this application. If I put my credentials in there, everyone could see my credentials. Um, it'd be off. Obf, it would be hidden for uh, users that are not, you know, technical. But anyone who had any technical knowledge could go in there, see your source code, see your credentials, and then mess up your database. So you don't want that. Um, 
that's where a server comes in. One of the nice things about a server is in React, can connect to the server. We can you know talk to the server, we can authenticate with it, log in, do requests, and the server holds the credentials. And we can't see the code for the server. All we do is we interact with it with HTTP. So it's a nice little layer that will um, kind of hide and do authentication, hide our credentials. So that's one reason the server is good. Another reason is for, like I was saying, WebSockets. So we can know when someone else in another computer or on their phone somewhere else in the world is clicking on our thing. It goes to our central server and a server lets everyone know that stuff is popping up here. So that's really nice. Third reason why a server is good is for um, for background tasks. So if I want to run something that's going to take a lot of time, you don't want that taking the um, person's computer. You don't want to like take a bunch of CPU power and run for like 30 minutes and have to have the window open, right? If there's something you need to run in the background, you can do that in a server and then the user doesn't have to have the window or the application open here and it can still be running. So that's really nice. So those are the three things that are nice about a server. And so now you kind of know why I'm using React, the server, and the database and kind of how they are all interconnected. Now GraphQL, this is just cherry on top to make the, uh, talking to the server and React easier. Um, you don't, this is not necessary at all and it's basically just a ease of life you know I enjoy using it and makes programming this easier and faster so that's it for this video guys that is how each component what it brings to the table if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video